going forward, it's important for us to understand that the numbers that we work with A-level maths and that you've worked through uh, with at GCSE, um, they all have special properties. So you will have heard me or uh, your teacher use words like integers. Um, they might have used uh, natural numbers or whole numbers um, or uh, real numbers or rational numbers or irrational numbers. What are these? What makes them different from one another? Okay. Um, how do we put it all together? So when we're looking at numbers, they do have these different properties. And what we can do is we can build up this kind of map of thinking, right, is it one of these? Is it one of these? Is it one of these? How, what uh, properties does it have? Okay. So what we start with are those natural numbers. Now, it's, more, it's less likely that you've heard of the natural numbers. Okay. Now, the natural numbers are represented by like a, a capital N. Okay, it's strangely written. Okay, strangely drawn. Okay, it's kind of uh, this bold f uh, typeface that's used uh, to represent them. But the natural numbers are just the counting numbers. So if you go way back, then it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way. Okay, uh, off as far as you like to go. So the natural numbers are just the counting numbers. Okay. Now, you'll notice that I'm not including zero there, or negative numbers for that matter. Now, negative numbers, maybe you can see as to why we might not include them at this point, but zero, that's a little bit more of a contentious issue, I'm afraid. Um, usually with things that in mathematics, uh, we are very definite on whether zero is a natural number or not. Um, for our specification, zero is not a natural number, but it's not something that you're going to get tested on in the exam. But it is good to know that there is this kind of uh, argument, if you will, going on um, outside that, you know, some people say that zero is a natural number, some people say that it's not. Uh, mathematicians generally say that it's not, okay? But um, in other fields, um, zero is often contained in the natural numbers. So I've seen some textbooks that don't include zero as a natural number and instead introduce uh, another subset known as the whole numbers, um, which is all the natural numbers plus zero. It seems... Um, a little useless to really kind of uh, have a whole different thing for that. So these are the natural numbers. So if we now want to include zero and those negative numbers, minus one, minus two, minus three, that introduces us to the integers. So the integers are represented with a capital Z and they include all of the natural numbers plus zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, etc. Okay, so it's including all of the natural numbers plus a load more. Okay, so it's twice the size of the natural numbers plus a little bit extra, that's zero. Okay, so that's what we mean when we talk about integers. So, once we're there, we start to think, well, we know that there are numbers between the gaps, between 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, and we usually think of them, oh, they're, they're decimal numbers, okay? Well, that's true, um, but we could also represent a lot of them as fractions, 
but seeing as uh, fractions can always be represented as a decimal, not all decimals can be represented as a fraction. Okay, so the world of fractions is smaller than the world of decimals in general. Okay, so the world of fractions include all the natural numbers and all the integers, but also a half, a third, three quarters, five sevenths, uh, eight ninths, whatever fraction you like, plus minus eight ninths or minus five sevenths, and we call those the rational numbers. Okay, now the rational numbers are represented with a Q, okay, uh, for quotients. So these will include a half, two thirds, minus three quarters, minus five sevenths, um, minus seven uh, halves, okay? So you can have top heavy fractions in there as well, but it includes all those natural numbers, all of the integers, and all of those fractions as well. Okay, so our diagram's getting bigger and bigger. Okay, so then you get to other numbers. Okay, so you get to uh, numbers that can't be written as fractions, that are irrational. So that means that we've got things like pi, and we've got things like e, okay? Uh, we've got root 2, we've got root 3 or root 5. And to generalise this, uh, this includes all of these plus all of those irrational numbers as well. And we refer to those as the real numbers, okay? Now, the real numbers include all the natural numbers, all the integers, all the rational numbers, and also things like root 2, root 3, pi, e, okay, all those irrational numbers as well. Now, of course, that's not the whole story. OK, um, this is really our picture for A-level maths. OK, but this isn't everything. So you might be able to think, well, really, is there any other numbers um, that cannot be contained in this or isn't, uh, wouldn't be strictly within one of these? Um, and you may find it very difficult to think of one, um, because unless you've met anything that comes after this, um, you would be perfectly happy with thinking, well, that's it. You know, anything that's not a natural number or a negative number or zero or a fraction or a number like pi or e or a third like that. Okay, how can there be anything else? Well, the next layer out includes the complex numbers. Now, the complex numbers we don't need to deal with at this stage, uh, but I'm, in, I'm including it in this video because of out of for interest sake, really. Um, now, the complex numbers um, are based on this idea that what if we allowed ourselves to square root negative numbers? What would uh, the number system look like? Well, through that, we introduced the square root minus 1 is i. Now, this is also a little bit contentious because sometimes it is j depending on which exam board you're looking at, 
and uh, whether you're looking at mathematics from a pure mathematics point of view or a physics-based or applied sense. Applied sense usually use the letter J, uh, mathematicians use the letter I. And the complex numbers include anything that has an I in it. So we could have uh, 2i or 3 plus i and this introduces has all of these numbers plus any that now have an i in it okay so there is this extra layer that's going on in the background we don't need to worry about it at this stage but it's good to know that there is something else out there and there are other layers, okay? So what we're going to be doing really in this section is moving forward with looking at um, irrational numbers, okay? Things like root 2 and root 3 or root 8, okay, to really get our heads around how they work and how we can manipulate them.